So we were talking about center of mass last time. Um, and one of the things that we noticed is if we have two particles uh, that are separated by uh, you know some distance and they're interacting with the third particle we can take the first two particles find their center of mass and then treat them as a single particle uh, you know with with mass of their combined mass and then use that to find the center of mass of the entire system but this works for as many particles as we want and it works even if we don't have this nice symmetry that we have here um, so let's imagine we have, uh, you know, some object like a wrench. So we have our wrench. Uh, and that's made up of a collection of particles, right? So we can imagine, you know, all of the atoms that make up this wrench. And then we find and then we find the center of mass of all of those. And then we can use that to find out how um, gravitationally that wrench uh, you know interacts with something else you know like say a baseball so we can have a baseball over here and again we'll take all of the atoms that make up the baseball so all of the particles in that system average over those find its center of mass and now we can use that to find where the center of mass of the wrench baseball system is so what we've really do so what we've really done is we've taken our first system the wrench and found its center of mass then we've taken our second system the baseball and found its center of mass and now we take the combined system the wrench baseball system and find its center of mass in other words we've taken the wrench put all of the mass of the wrench at its center of mass taken the baseball put all of the mass of the baseball at its center of mass and then we all of a sudden now we just have a two particle system that we can find the center of mass of uh, so that's really all there is to it um, and the fact that we can do this really makes life much easier for us it didn't necessarily have to be this way you know we can imagine a universe where this where these weren't the actual laws of physics and you couldn't just take a wrench and treat its entire um, you know all of the physics that, that govern its interaction with things far away as happening at a point in its center but it turns out that's exactly what we can do um, and if we couldn't it would make it would make physics and engineering much more difficult um, but because we can and especially because if we have something like the earth that's a sphere and we know that its center of mass is in the center now we can treat an entire planet like a point particle and then we can take the Sun so we treat the entire Sun like a point particle and then we can use that to calculate things uh, about the way that the earth and the Sun interact um, so we're going to start to look a little more about things now that we know how we can talk about things in real life uh, in terms of their center of mass um, you know, now we're going to start to be curious about, okay, what's going to happen if, uh, if our particles are moving now? And that's what we're going to look at next time.